you do that uh, History Channel show, hunting, hunting, hunting Hitler. Hitler. That was fun. Did you ever find Hitler? Yeah, so he died. And, um, and. What up, fellas? It's your boy Josh coming out of Penn State. Oh. I just had a question for y'all. I'm wondering what the weirdest shit y'all ever seen handed out of trick or treating is. This has to spitters or uh, We once had a lady in my grandma's neighborhood handing out fruit kebabs. Nobody want that shit, man. Nah, Come on. Don't trust it. Fruit oh, man. kebabs? Gang, yeah. gang, buzz, buzz. Gang, baby. P.S. Brendan, you look like a Roblox version of Channing Tatum, you ugly fucker. What? That's oh, all right. Man. Yeah, but the kiss anything. didn't help at the end. Why did he have to say ugly fuck? It was a fine roast. Did he kiss at the end? Yeah, yeah, I think he kissed at the end. I think he struggled with his pronoun. Yeah, and his face, uh, it, it, right, it, that close-up look at the face, if he had this yeah. wig on, we'd all want to smash. Oh, he's one, he's one frat party away from being arrested. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Looks like a white Paulo Costa. Ooh, uh, a little I would bit. Say, oh, I would say a caramel apple. Because it's, you know I mean? it's such a caramel apple. No, I mean, he said trick-or-treating, something weird. That's a big thing to give out to kids. That's a great gift. You ready, Ari? Ari, you think we're taking your word? You ready? Are we ready? Wait, wait, wait. Bobby's got to tell you if we're ready. We're ready, we're ready. Ari Shafir. Yes. Do you respect Brendan Shaw as a comedian? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, Ari, this isn't uh, one of the lie detector uh, test questions, but let me just ask you something. Do you yeah. respect David Tell as a comedian? Yes. <laughs> see how, you see so how it sounds when you tell the truth? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you see, you didn't, you didn't have that pained look on your face? Ari the person does not enjoy this, but, Ari, nice but Ari, the, Ari the comedian it, loves what's happening right now. <laughs> Oh, you want me to ask that one? Okay. He does better than most retired fighters. All right. <laughs> All right, next one. Okay, number three. Do you respect Brendan Schaub as a, com a comedian? <laughs> can I trade this question no, for two more questions? <laughs> no, you cannot. You said yes, and the lie detector test determined that was a lie. Wow! Wow! Ari. Ari, right, who's your friend? I, 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 I'm also surprised. Oh. Um... <laughs> I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you're a bitch, you're a slut, you're a liar, you're a whore. What is that? <laughs> what is it? I think you have to take it case by case. I'm like, homeboy's talking to me while defending himself. Yeah. It's not like I was eating punches. Well, he was hitting you, you know, but 100%. You, were, you were flattened out. A lot of things look bad about that fight. You were lunging with, like, your punches instead of getting there with your footwork mm. and then launching things from the proper distance. You were, you were like, really reaching and loading up. Mm. You, were, you looked very stiff. You looked very stiff. You didn't look fluid. You know, you just didn't look good. It didn't look like you were well prepared. Like, the, your movement just didn't look like an elite fighter's movement. Mm. What you were doing was very, very stiff. It was very stiff, and it was like a lot of apprehension in your movement. You could see the way Travis is moving. Like, his boxing was very clean, very clean, good technique, good movement. He's a bad motherfucker. You know, I was worried about you coming into this fight. I can, yeah. tell, you, I can tell you that right now. I worry about your commitment to fighting, and I worry about really? where you stand. Not your commitment to training. Not, not your commitment to training, not your commitment to give it your all. I think you have one foot out the door. I think you're I disagree. looking. You disagree? Mm -hmm. I think okay, you're, yeah. looking at, you're looking at wh where the future is going to take you and that you can't do this forever. You know, and I think that's a very dangerous place to be in fighting. You're a smart dude. And the problem with smart dudes is smart dudes think about concussions. You think about how many you've already had, how many you got coming up, how much damage you're taking in training, when does when does damage start to show up in your life? The reality of your skill set and where you at now, I don't see you beating the elite guys. Mm. I don't see you beating Cain Velasquez. I don't see you beating Junior Dos Santos. I don't see you beating Fabricio Verdum. You came into fighting fairly late in life. You're a good athlete. You're a strong guy, you're a big guy, and you can do a lot of things because of that. And you can, you're very dedicated, and you're very disciplined, and you get shit done. But 
there's a reality of fluidity of movement of, of, of mechanical efficiency of movement that happens when you get a guy who's trained his whole life at a certain aspect of, of, of MMA, whether it's wrestling, whether it's kickboxing, whether it's jiu-jitsu, there's a fluidity to their movement that you don't really have. And it's not that you don't try hard, it's not that you're not dedicated, it's not that you're not disciplined, it's not that you're not intelligent. There's shit that other people can do that you can't do. If you had a wrestling match with Cain Velasquez, how well do you think you'd do? Straight up wrestling? Yeah. I think people would be surprised. Really? Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. I think you'd be surprised. Mm. I really do. I think he'd fuck you up. There's a certain amount, of, there's a bridge between you and the very best guys in the world. And I don't know if you can cross that bridge. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the reality of life. You're a very good fighter. That's not what the, the issue is. The issue is... Can you become a champion? If you can't become a champion, are you comfortable with getting knocked out three or four more times over the next five or six years? Mm. You know, and that's, that that's is a, a possibility. It's a possibility. Yeah. It might not happen. You might be okay, but it also might happen. It might, it might happen two fights in a row. It might happen, you know, I mean, if you have to have a rematch for some, look, if Travis Brown loses his next fight and you win your next fight and you have a rematch with Travis Brown by some strange unforeseen circumstance, mm -hmm. It's a fucking tough fight for you, again, you know, and it very well could happen the same way, again. You know, or he's it could more happen fluid. the other way, for sure. It could, but he's he's more fluid on his feet. He's he's more lethal. Like, he his, his ability to close the distance and land shots, he has an extra speed, an extra ability to connect that I don't see from you. I, I, I don't necessarily, and you know me, you're my boy, I don't agree with it for you, everything you're saying either. Okay. The Olofsky fight looked like you couldn't pull the trigger. Look, you you were you were telegraphing the right hand. It was like it was a real. Your attacks were real obvious. Like yeah. it was it was real obvious what you were attempting to do. You were being very predictable. And Arlovsky was stiff as hell. He was so nervous, and you couldn't close the deal on him. You couldn't get in on him. You couldn't land shots. I thought you should have won that fight, but I thought it was a terrible fight. You know, if I'm a guy who's a talent scout and I'm looking at potential world beaters and I'm looking at guys who can fight at the elite level or guys who can fight for a world title, based on those performances, I would not say that you're there. Mm. You shouldn't be fighting at an elite level if you move a certain way, if you have a certain hitch to your step, if, you, if you're making mistakes like lunging forward with punches, you're leaving your chin exposed, you're, 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 you're loading up on the right hand over and over again, you're not recognizing that you're not hiding it enough, you're not recognizing that you're not being diverse enough in your attack. I worry more about you than I do about them because I think that you, you leave more openings, you have more vulnerabilities. What I'm saying, I say with love. 100%. Mm. I'm not saying this because I want to hurt your feelings. Uh, this is the last thing I want to do. If the BT Sport, I, I like them very much. Great guys, great lads. And uh, I like their vibe. I like their vibe very much. Uh, hello, Ariel. On your IG story today, you posted a screenshot of you listening to Hit Em Up. Oh, what a great song by Tupac. One of the great diss tracks of all time. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. One of the great diss tracks of all time. I used to listen to that song before every basketball game in uh, in high school because it would just fire me up. The passion, the emotion, uh, the animosity, the hatred. It just got me in the right mental space. Is there context behind this or anything you'd like to get off your chest? And so I'll consider that the hot tag, even though it's not exactly the tag I was looking for. I'll consider that the hot tag, if you will, because we're running out of time. And so I know a lot of you want me to respond to Brendan Schaub on his show, a great soliloquy, a great rant, uh, 10 or so minutes. Thank you to the PF Chang's crew for the clip. I would never know otherwise, of course. Why would we know? We don't check social media, right? We don't know what's going on. <clears throat> uh, and, it, you know, it's like one of those things. It's like, again, do I have to go over this? Again, do we have to talk about this? It's the the, 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 the subtle, not so subtle shots. It's the passive aggressive. It's the quick mentioning of the name. And there's a part of me that doesn't want to drum it up all over again. But then there's a bigger part of me that is tired of the bullies, tired 
of the BS artists, tired of the fake people. And so I kind of feel compelled, if I may, on behalf of the MMA community to speak up. And if I may, and they haven't asked me to do this, to perhaps, I don't know, defend our honor. And so I came away from that little clip with a few conclusions. Number one, the biggest one was this man, this man legitimately thinks that he is better than us. I want you guys to realize that. This man thinks he's better than us. And when I say us, I don't just mean me. I don't just mean the MMA media. I mean you as well. Watch the demeanor. Listen to the words. This man thinks that he is better than us. And he's sitting back and he is talking about, you know, having talent, not having talent, careers, money, jobs, places in life, pecking orders, what you've done, what you haven't done, and casting all kinds of conclusions on people, all kinds of aspersions, all kinds of, of fabrications on people when really, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. And he sits there and he talks about how he wants to be positive and he talks about how he wants to, you know, have a good, peaceful life. Meanwhile, this is the guy who's been talking shit for the past five years. This is the guy who is literally sitting there while talking about being positive, insulting MMA media, saying that they're irrelevant, calling them hacks while saying that he wants to be positive. This is the guy who, after five years of listening to his lies about not just me, but others as well, finally made me snap. Don't get it twisted. This is not a positive fellow. Don't fall for it. It's again, fake and phony. And now I can't wait to see who calls me, who texts me this time to say, hey, we want to be friends, Olive Branch, and then not follow through. Because last time it was Brian. The first time it was Brendan. Who's going to follow up this time? Is it Shrimp? Is he going to follow up? I'm tired of the fakeness. And all I said was, all you guys had to do was apologize cleanly once and for all. And this would be over. I wouldn't keep bringing it up. In fact, I'd probably ignore the question like I ignore some of the other questions that people try to get me to answer that are, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel. But you don't. You make it worse. You sit there and you talk about how MMA media are a bunch of hacks. You sit there and you talk about how MMA media are a bunch of losers who never walked into the fire, who are just weathermen, who have no talent. First of all, let me explain something to all the fighters, all the managers, all the promoters, all the hanger-ons, all the sisters, all the brothers, all the mothers, all the fathers involved in MMA, in the MMA community. Let me be very, very clear about something right here now because we've heard it since the beginning of time. We've heard it since we all started. MMA media are hacks, they're losers, they can't hang, they don't know what they're doing. These are the men and women who have devoted their lives in some way, shape, or form to covering you. They're the ones who have told editors, hey, you should focus on this sport. You should focus on these fights, on these fighters, on these organizations. We're usually the first to go, believe it or not. But these are the people that focus on you and cover you and think and talk about you 24 seven. It's not the other media that you wish you were covered by. Trust me, I just came from the mainstream they don't know you like we know you. They don't care about you like we care about you. They don't follow you and cover you like we do. And so whenever you guys talk about MMA media being hacks, what does that say about you? What does that say about you when the people who have devoted their lives to covering you are the hacks, are the losers? What does that say about you? Think about what you're saying about yourself. These are the ones covering you. Do people talk about that in other beats? Oh, the baseball media. They're, but yeah, of course, you may not like someone here or there. You may not be on the same page. But we hear this time and again from these people. Oh, they're hacks. They're this, they're that. They've never been through the fire. Meanwhile, not every political reporter has run for president. Not every, every film critic has, 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 has made a movie. Not every restaurant critic has run a restaurant. It's a tired, lazy, BS excuse to hide from the other stuff. And you talk about these op-ed pieces. So there was this piece in, 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 in Bloody Elbow about Joe Rogan. First of all, I don't agree with the piece. I think Joe Rogan is a valued member. I think he's an important part of the sport. I think he should be in a Hall of Fame. He has done a tremendous amount of good for the sport. I have no issues with Joe Rogan's place in the sport. My only issue is the one that I said back in the day, 2016, when he spread the lie, and I'm over it. I don't care. Honestly, 
My uncle goes on his show. It's all good. But this uh, this article was saying that Joe Rogan should be removed from the broadcast. Now, I don't agree with that. I think the way they use him is perfect. 12 shows, it's perfect. Pay-per-views, it feels like a big deal. He's a star. He's one of the biggest comics in the world, one of the biggest podcasters in the world. It makes sense. He was there in the dark days. He's there now. He loves the sport. And then for 35 other events or whatever the number is, 31 events, you get Bisping and you get DC and you get Paul Felder and you get Dominic Cruz and you get, you know, obviously Anik and and, and, and Brendan Fitzgerald and, and John Gooden and Laura Sanko. I mean, you get the best of the best. So I don't agree with it. But every time there's an opinion piece, they're like, this isn't journalism. First of all, you talk about people who don't know what you've been through. Who are you to talk about journalism? What the hell do you know about journalism? Because you sit in front of a microphone? You know about journalism? Because you've been interviewed by people you know about journalism? You don't. And if you did, you would know that since the beginning of time, since the beginning of media, since the beginning of papers, newspapers, internet, radio, the op-ed piece, the opinion piece, the column has been a part of journalism. Everyone knows that there's opinion pieces in the paper, there's straight newsers in the paper, there's something for everyone. And so what's the difference? We're not allowed to have an opinion? That's a part of covering the sport. So you, you know, you you, you dismiss this like it's like, oh, that's not journalism. That's not this. That's, of course, it is journalism. It's a part of journalism. Talk about the hacks. Talk about the guys, you know, who need to talk about you guys for clicks. First of all, they were talking about Rogan. They weren't talking about you. He has the talent you don't. Let's just call it like it is. He's the guy with the $200 million Spotify deal. You don't. And so don't lump yourself in on that fight. I think it's I think it's honorable. I, I will say I think it's honorable. The loyalty is nice. I will say that from the bottom of my heart. I like a guy who has a guy's back. Pause. But you know what I'm saying. I like a guy who defends the honor of his friend. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. Much respect. Honestly. But this had nothing to do with you. And you use this article as an opportunity to take shots on a bunch of people. And if I'm being honest, it felt like you were just talking about me. And that's why I'm spending so much time at the end of the show about this. And so let me clear up something right here and now for the final time because it will be brought up over and over again. And it will still probably be brought up. I have never in my life, in media, going on 15 years of doing this, I have never had a conversation with an editor, with a website, where someone told me about clicks. Write about this, write about that. I've never been paid off of clicks. I've never been asked to make headlines that are click-worthy, click-baity. I've never, these detractors, these naysayers, love to talk about the clicks and how we write stuff for, no one cares about that. You think that Joe Rogan piece is gonna break the bank? You think it's gonna change the future of Bloody Elbow, of Vox Media, by the way, Vox, own bloody elbow i don't have anything to do with them but hey sister site you think that changes anything it doesn't stop saying that and even if it did you're in the pay-per-view business you're in the ticket selling business you're in the podcast business people in the newspaper business what do you think they did things like just for the you know, sake of it out of the goodness of their heart. Of course, everyone's here to make money. So like when you use that as a reason to hate on something, it's A, inaccurate and B, stupid because it's actually, you know, the complete opposite of how people run business. People try to sell things the same way you try to sell merch to no one and rip off logos of other people, the same way you try to sell, you know, comedy tickets to no one and then they have to combine the days, the same way you try to put up podcasts to no one and pay for views and downloads it's the same thing you would like to have those clicks you would like to have those listens you would like to have those dollars and cents but you don't and and and, and, and the issue is we're all in this to make money but no one has ever 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 said do this or that in order to get some clicks now there were a couple shots a couple pot shots at me that i must address uh the, the 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 jobs how many jobs have you been fired from? How many jobs have you had? Again, I wish he would just at me. I wish he would just, you know, say my name directly. But, you know, I don't know. 
maybe Hiawani is, is is too tough to say in a soliloquy like that. Um, let's correct the record. I've only been fired from one official job, and that was the Fox job. You know what happened there. You know that had nothing to do with me. You know they paid me for the rest of the year, and you know the reason why I uh, was let go was because the UFC told them to let me go. And you could bring up the Showtime gig as well. That was a three-day gig. It was a one-week gig. They paid me out as well, and that, again, was because of the UFC. Other than that, I have stood the test of time. And if you want to call up Bristol, Connecticut right now and ask them about the contract they offered me, go ahead. I was not fired. Now let's talk about you. College football, how'd that go? How'd NFL go? How did fighting go? How did comedy go? How did podcasting go? How did TV go? Did you achieve your goals? Did you realize your dreams? Did you make it to the top? Was your claim to fame being told by your friend that it was time to move on and it was a great moment? I mean, we talked about it on this show. He put you over. You were the biggest baby face in the biz. You had it. Silver platter. You had it. You were going after everyone. You were on this show, that show. You were the guy, the truth teller. But how did those gigs go? And how are they going now? Don't talk about other people's jobs. Again, you do this fake, fake gimmick where you're like, oh, holier than thou. I just sit back and I stay in my lane. I don't read anything. You do that whole gimmick. Meanwhile, you read everything. You're affected by everything. And then you throw these pot shots. Those who live in glass houses should not throw any kind of stone ever. And right now that glass house is, I mean, it is right there. Wherever that, I mean, it is, it is sitting right there. Don't talk about people's jobs. That's how we got into this mess. Don't talk about people's livelihoods when you don't know. Again, you keep doubling down. You'll text me and you'll apologize and then you'll keep talking about it again. And so the bottom line is tired of people like you spitting lies, BSing us all, pretending like you know what you're talking about. There's a reason I never spoke about you for five, six years. I never responded to you. I don't need to. You talk about how I need to have 17 guests or so on my show. First of all, five today, and they were great. Six if you count Pitbull. I love talking to these people. There's a reason why when I went to ESPN, they wanted to do Ariel and the Bad Guy in DC and Hawani. And actually, the biggest point of contention between us was that I wanted to talk to too many people. If you look at the YouTube numbers on the nose, this segment does better than most of the fighters. But I love talking to the fighters. It's all about the fighters. It will always be about the fighters. So you can make fun all you want that I get 17 guests on my show, that I need these guests to get over, to get views, and that, oh, if we talk about you, that's how we get... I never uttered your name. I never said a word about you. You're the one who keeps talking about us. You're the one who keeps sitting there looking at the websites when your boy pulls them up and talking about us. And then you steal our ideas and our contents. You do it to Luke, you do it to Brian, you do it to me, you do it to everyone. You steal our ideas and you sit there and you pass them off as your own and you even botch it when you do it. You botch it when you do it every single time. You sit there and you rip off our ideas. It's plagiarism 101, except you're not writing anything, you're saying it. And it's harder to catch that way. But trust me, we're all onto you. You sit there and you talk about Tyson Fury being your favorite fighter and then you say that you wanna slit your wrist when you hear about mental health in Tyson Fury. You truly love Tyson Fury, you fake phony. You care about his struggles with mental health. So you could say all that you want about the 17 guests. You could say all that you want about the fighters. I love talking to the fighters. I will always love talking about the fighters. And at least I don't pay them to come on my show. At least I don't have to pay them to come hang out and eat a taco with me. And at least I don't have them say, hey, you got to do this show if you want to do this show. You know what I'm talking about. If you want to shoot, we'll shoot. Stop talking about things when you're living in a glass house and you have no idea what is going on. If the knock that you have against me is that I, I, I have 17 guests on the show when I don't, but I have fighters on the show, big names, small names, middle names, medium names, God bless. But at least I don't pay them to come on and at least I don't try to cut deals from one show to the next. And in conclusion, I'll just say, and this is a shout out to my friends over on the uh, 
on the internet, the PF Changs community, the homeless cat community. And this is a message to everyone in the back over there. This is a message to any friend I have, to any family member I have, to any colleague that I have, to any associate that I have. If it ever gets to the point where I am big enough to where there is a Reddit page, any kind of web page, made in my honor to celebrate my show, where they only talk about the podcast, if it ever gets to that point, congratulate me. But please do me a favor, please, bottom of the heart, do me this favor. If it ever gets to that point where there's 40,000 or so people whose sole mission is to expose you and to call you out on your BS, please tell me to stop. Your own community turned on you. Your own community figured you out. And we know you're rattled by it. And I'm not a proponent of online bullying. But dare I say you brought this unto yourself, my man. You brought this upon yourself. One more time. Stop talking about me. Stop with the fake apologies. Just, you did it well the last couple weeks. You didn't bring it up. You stayed in your lane. You were in the storm. We were reporting on the storm. Better that way. Joe Rogan doesn't need you to fight his battles. Do your thing. God bless. Stay in your lane. Do your shows. I wish you nothing but the best. But stop talking about me and the MMA media. Stop lying about the business, people's jobs, the fighters. Stop all of that. And again, I'll say I'm done. Until the next time, unless you want to just apologize once and for all on the air, like you said you were going to do, like you promised me that you were going to do, like Brian Callen said he was going to do and never did. Um, if you guys want to do that, then that would be great. And I would be here to uh, accept said apology. And so to go back to the original question, why I posted that screenshot. F Brendan Chubb. F the fighter and the kid. F below the belt. F that whole crew. And if you do want to be down with them, then F you too. Brian Callen, F you too. Shrimp, F you too. Dude in the back with the with the, the websites, F you too. When I see them, they run. Okay, now I won't stop with the analogies, but you get the point. F all those guys. I'm done with them. Again. Once and for all, stop talking about us. We are done. And so that's my piece on that. Shout out to Omar. And it's crazy that I said it the first time. And then, I mean, blew, like, may you rest in peace. But I will remind you guys, it's not a gimmick. It's a lifestyle. If you come at the king, you best not miss. Once again, I don't care who you are. And, and you could stay in my good graces. You could stay awfully quiet, but you best not miss. And this guy and these guys, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, continue to miss. Clank, 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 clank. They continue to miss. Stop shooting. We're good. God bless. Enough. Yeah, well, to be fair, you know, again, we made fun of him for possibly having CTE, but whatever. It's not a big deal. We gotta... I, don't, I don't think that's uh, like a joke. Well, I think it's... <laughs> he I think probably it's, has CTE. I, I know, but it's hilarious. But uh, but no, he. I know he's another one. I Definitely another one that kind of... Uh, he called your podcast not funny, by the way. Not that he even started shit, but he did say you guys aren't funny and... Uh, some All for right. some reason that's he, another one. Yeah, that's another one where I'm just like, if I were them, and I just saw a clip of my podcast, and I wanted to come up with a new take that was like, I'm not gonna as a comic, I'm not gonna condemn him for being racist, but I will say, uh, the podcast isn't fun. I don't know. I don't know. He's he also. Yeah, whatever. Ah, he pulled back. It, it, I, I, I like, never, I've never seen him, but I get a lot of uh, people saying, what do you think of him? Like trying to bait me to talk shit about him, but I don't know. Yeah, think ever... here's, he's, uh, he's, he's new. He's fucking new at stand-up. Yeah, I know And he's doing story. a fucking, he's got a special 
that uh, was, I'll, I'll go ahead. If he said my podcast isn't funny, I'll say that his special was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my favorite job take on my SNL thing. Cause he's, he's moved on. He's got, he's got to worry about sneakers and jeans or whatever. The fuck. <laughs> but, uh, That's true. I mean. You know, being an LA comic, you, you're very concerned about fashion. I, I, you hear people talk shit on shop about like, uh, I don't know. I, I remember I just saw a comment that was like, he failed at football, at MMA, and now he's failing at comedy. Well, I mean, and, yeah, and, and then and then he did know. and then he did a special where he did an Asian voice that you got in trouble for, but everybody loves him. Yeah. I get it, I do. I yeah, damn, supermodel. Yeah. She dated Leonardo DiCaprio before that. Ooh, yeah. wow, body bags, body yeah. bags. How about Pete Davidson? Talk about body bags. Let me tell you, something. he's with Kim K. Hit, dude, hit with you know, there's no way. He's not the sexiest guy ever. There's, there's, no, there's no, no way. Dude, Kate Beckinsale, fucking Ariana he's Grande, very, very Kim strange. Kardashian. Yeah, Brian. Not Brian so will so. attest to this. I know you. I can tell you this. I know you've never been to Staten Island. I know you've never been to Staten Island. I'm going to Rhode never. Island soon. <laughs> so listen to me. Look at me right now. Never say that again. Why not? Because never ever say. Oh God. I'm going to Rhode Island because you're correlating Rhode Island with Staten Island. No, I'm not. I'm oh. saying okay. it's kind of same. <laughs> no, no. That area is island. <laughs> It is island. So, yeah, it's like saying I'm. How far? How far away are they? Uh, how far is Staten Island? How far? Rhode Island? Well, well, this Rhode Island, Island right well, here. About four hours. Four or five hours. Four or five hours. <laughs> yeah. But but they're both Staten kind, Island. Kind of no, fix no, them, not. Brian. Yeah. Fix no, them. No, no they're, they're not, not the same area. They sure ain't. They sure ain't. Hold sure ain't. Use this clip too. I want this clip too. This is my third <laughs> clip. I'm just like, you know, because I read. Like, like, unlike a lot of guests. Yeah. Unlike a lot of guests, like I post, I repost. You don't have to even tell me. I want this as my third. I clip. appreciate it. We don't Never. care. He's right. You might even want to because you, you might protect, want to edit that. We want to cut that out. Yeah. Oh no, I don't give a fuck. Okay. Well, okay. No. Anyway, back to you. Back to have you ever been to Staten Island? Yes. Man, uh, how many? Many times? My, my aunt lived there, so I would go there all the time. Okay, but because I, I actually did it. Randomly, I did a play there, which is really fun. Okay, so you're the mayor of Staten Island. Outside of, outside of your aunt being there and doing a play there, desperate for work. Yeah. Because if you're doing a play which in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. Which I was. I was 24. The, the, part, the point is this. Nobody's going to Staten Island. Really? Unless you're tapping that ass. You just press a button and the meal leaves your stomach. And yeah, you put your phone, like, just put it right against your stomach and it just fucking absorbs it. <laughs> and then it sends it right to Brendan Schaub's mouth. <laughs> it just appears. Brendan Schaub will be like, ooh, boo, like eating at some fucking stupid restaurant. Like he, <laughs> and, then he, and then just shit just fills his mouth like a fucking Italian chipmunk. <laughs> just harboring nuts for the Olay. winter. Oh. <laughs> and he gets back in his leopard skin Miata that he bought for eight million dollars because he didn't doesn't know how to buy things. <laughs> Dude, when you child, when you f ever and I'm from Oregon. People ask me about Colby all the time. I tell them Colby Covington is what happens when you only hug your child once. Unlike Brendan Schaub, and that's what happens when you never hug him at all. But enough about. Enough about the pressure's more on Travis Brown. He's number three in the world. He switched camps. Pressure's on him, man. I'm going out there having fun. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, re really, it's just uh, it, it's. Uh, I, I just think he made a, a wrong choice. No, no, I, I don't. I don't know his situation, Albuquerque. He, he, it might have been a disaster there. Yeah. Uh, you know, massaging Alistair Overeem's ego too much. But I don't know what it is that made him leave. I know there's better. You know, there's better camps to go to. If Ronda's mom was in Travis's corner, I'd be shitting bricks right now. R Ronda's mom's a beast. You know, she's the one that created this monster, Ronda Rousey. You know, not, not Edmund. You know, to take credit for that. Yeah, when I vision, I just, uh, I just think I have too many ways to win. You know, and I, I think Travis, uh, he's the most dangerous heavyweight in the world, but uh, I'm a monster, man. Uh, just because he's, uh, you know, so dangerous doesn't mean he's a better fighter. I just think I'm a better fighter than he is. If you can get him out of the first round, and he's also never fought a guy who's more athletic than he is. He's fought guys who are flat-footed and they come at him and it's easy for him to throw his stuff and throw his knees and now he changes camp. So I think there's a lot of questions with Travis Brown. Every loss Travis has, I hear, well, yeah, but he hurt his knee when he got knocked out by Bigfoot Silva. Okay, but what's that have to do with head work? You're gonna get tore up. But believe me, I, I've been in with some of the best veterans in the world. But, uh, when it comes down to it, I'm just tougher. I'm just tougher. Um, you know, I think we can break this guy. The amount of support I get since doing the show is insane. Beat Andre Lossi, let's be real here, 99% of the world thinks that. Now I have the number three heavyweight in the world, Travis Brown.
Very nice of you. Shameful. <laughs> 44. 244. 244 for Mr. Shaw. Expletive. So I'm very curious to see how this all plays out. Three for Mr. Brown. Here we go. Let's go like it. You're the most violent man in the sport, and uh, one day I'm gonna. You're never gonna say. One day I'm gonna show you, and you're never gonna say I'm sloppy again. I I, I didn't say you're sloppy. I think. I you think. You say I throw caution to the wind. That come, that's come out of your mouth many times. 100. percent You do throw caution to the wind. Early no, in your no, fights. No. You you did, no, you said it about this fight. I didn't say that. After the fact. Yeah, you Going did. into it, I did. No, you said it after. Did I say it right here? Yeah, I saw your interview yesterday or a couple days. And you were trying, you didn't mean to, but you said he just kind of throws caution to the wind, man. It's a trigger for you when people say that you're kind of reckless. Well, no, I just, I just. It's a little bit of a trigger. You, I know you put it, a lot of hard work in. It makes me mad because you did this. You've done it. You did it for a long time. And you have, you have the ability to, 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 if you like took the time and actually like tried to like understand what I was doing, you would, I know you would get it. Yeah. But. You don't because I've shown. Because with the human eye, it's just fucking chaos. Like, that's all that's ensuing. Now, you know Matt Mitrione and Brendan Shove. I think Matt Mitrione was the one who actually played the most in the NFL. I didn't He's know the Shove one, so. Yeah, I didn't he know wasn't very good. No. He wasn't very good, much like his podcast hosting ability. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> ouch. Worst stand up special I've ever seen in my life. Really? Stand up special? Yeah. In the loosest that. sense of the word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who is it at Netflix or? Uh, they probably funded yeah, it. Yeah, it's on Showtime. Showtime? Yeah, it's on Showtime. Just look for the cover with the full grown man dressed like Justin Bieber. <laughs> All right. About me yesterday, I think it was. Um, and yes, of course I saw it. I don't play the certain type of game that he plays where he pretends like he doesn't see things and then he's like, oh, I don't run my social media. Oh, I didn't see this. Oh, I heard this. No, no, we know you run your social media. We know you see everything. True. We know that you're aware of everything and are just kind of playing it up, and that's fine. I guess it's a good gimmick. I don't get the Weatherman thing. I honestly don't. In fact, that was the first time I heard about it. Um, I, 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 is it an insult? Does it mean like we're sometimes right, sometimes wrong? I mean, it would be somewhat ironic considering the source, sometimes right, sometimes wrong. Uh, I, I like to pride myself on being always right. Um, so I don't get that one, and obviously that's not what I'm mad about because I didn't bring that up yesterday and i'm not even mad and so i'll go back to the previous point that i made at the top of the show i knew he was never going to apologize i know that wasn't even a sincere apology that i got on text it's because i tweeted about it on a wednesday several days later and there was a code word in there about a reddit page that love him dearly and then only afterwards 12 hours later did i get the quote-unquote apology and then i said all right are you going to do this Publicly, because you, you know, said some lies about me publicly, so it seems like the natural place. Of course I knew he wasn't going to come back and be as sincere as he was on this text on camera. He can't do that. And so the, the funniest thing about the whole thing is I'm watching this segment. He doesn't even bring it up. His boy Brian bring, brings it up, who continued to say, Ariel so sensitive, Ariel so sensitive, Ariel so sensitive, Ariel so sensitive. Newsflash for Brian, who I've never met before other than the time that he's been on this podcast. What makes you think I'm so sensitive? 
Is it because I'm annoyed that for the for the past like five, six years, you guys keep saying these lies about me and I've never even responded once? Let me ask you this, because he kept saying on the show, we're in different lanes. Almost like he's, you know, he's above. He's in a different lane. He's doing other things, right? He's, you know, he's a comedian. He's a podcaster. He's got all these shows. He's doing great. Let me ask you this for those that watch both shows. How many times have you heard me talk about his show, him on this show, or any other show that I've ever done? The ESPN shows, DC, Chael, MMA Hour. How many times have you heard me react to anything that has ever been said on this show from his show? How many times have you heard me talk about the state of his career? How many times have you heard me say, oh, I saw something on that show. Let me talk about this on my show. How many times? I'm going to guess zero. There might, maybe, I'm going to say, to be fair, maybe once, I think wholeheartedly zero. Now let me ask you, how many times does he talk about me? How many times has he reacted to something that's going on in my life, my job situation? right? The behind the scenes. Let me tell you how it really is behind the scenes. Who cares more about who in this equation? For someone who wants to come out and say that he doesn't care about me and doesn't pay attention to me and has nothing to do with me and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a byproduct of some drone strike, I have no idea what the hell is he talking about. Is he mad at someone? Because then come out and say it. If you want to be a shooter from the hip, then come out and say it. I'm a byproduct. Of, I don't know what the F you're talking about, but I know that you Language. like to talk about me a lot. You like to talk about my my career, my comings and goings, behind the scenes, who likes me, who doesn't like me, who wants to work with me, who doesn't want to work with me. It's a weird thing to say you don't care, different lanes, but yeah, you're always talking about me. That's strange, and yet I never talk about you. So who's the sensitive one? Who's the one who's actually bothered by all of this? It's not jealousy, right? That can't be. We're in different lanes. So what is it? I don't get it. And it's a weird thing because it's like, all right, you're saying that, you know, I'm a byproduct. I'm by Everything you said was about me, no one else. So who are you talking about? Who do you have a beef with? Why are you always talking about me? That's the part that I don't understand. And so, so even afterwards, like after I was on McAfee, you know, I, I, I got a text. Hey, man, uh, you know, I don't want a war. You don't want a war, right? And I'm like, no, you, very nice on text. Let's go to war. Pleasant on text. But then when we get to the show, it's stammering. It's it's having your friends set it up. It's taking little pot shots. So which one is it? Who's the real Brendan? That's what I want to know. Who's the real guy? I remember when I was removed from the Showtime gig for Mayweather McGregor. I remember when that happened. And you were very kind to me. You came up to me in the hotel in Toronto. I remember that vividly. And you said how, how messed up it was and all this stuff. And then I remember your show the following week and how you took some shots and how you said we did kind of the same thing. You didn't really understand why I was there. And I was like, wow, that's not the same tone. That's totally different than when I heard at the, at the hotel. So you're not two faced, right? Like you're not playing an act here and then on your show playing a different act, right? Which is the real guy. I keep a 100 here. It's Hiawani all day, every day. Same guy. You could say all you want about me being an instigator, a potter. You could call me sensitive. You could do this and that. But I'm the same dude. And you know what's funny? After I had that little rant last week, let's play this game now. How many people reached out to you when you said I was tough to work with? How many people reached out to you privately and said, oh, I've had some bad experiences with that guy? Because I could tell you how many people reached out to me after I had to say a few things last week. Damn. That's weird, right? So again, like the great Dennis Green once said, they are who we thought they were. You are, you guys are, who I thought you were. You're going to sit there and be like, he's the best, he's the this, he's the that, but then pot shot, pot shot, pot shot. And, and what was that part that you took out? What was that part? You want to beat me up? You're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go to the lowest common denominator? You're, you know, you're a comedian now. You're a pot. You got a great gig. You want to beat me up? The guy with the glasses? The guy with the suit? That's what we're resorting to. Something, by the way, that some of the toughest human beings that I've had on this show who sometimes don't like me have never resorted to. But that is that the part that they took out, threatening me? You want me to come to L.A.? You, should we do some some bench presses? What should we do? Should we do some push-ups? What, what, what were you implying there? I don't know. I don't know what all this is about. I'm sure in a while I'll get a text. Hey, bro, I don't want to fight. 
but isn't your guy who works on your show talking about my family on his Instagram? Shrimp. He is, right? Hey, talking about my family. That's the kind of people you guys are. Fake, phony, and everyone knows who you are now. You have been outed. Everyone knows. And maybe I shined a bit of a spotlight on it, but everyone knows your whole gimmick. Brian Callen, don't talk about me. You know nothing about me. Who are you talking about? I'm sensitive. Based on what? Based on what? This might be the first time I've ever said your mouth other than the time you were on my show. You got enough going on, my man. Don't talk about me. Brent, done with you, man. Brendan, done with you. The other dude sitting next to me pretending not to know who I am when we all know that whole thing was concocted. Done with you guys. I'm over it. I'm moving on. If you want to apologize, great. But it means nothing to me. I felt like I was watching the scene from Billy Madison where he's rambling on, and that's the clip that I posted yesterday. It was an incoherent, fake segment that I expected, and then some. It was useless. We all knew it was coming. We all predicted it. You're not sorry. You doubled down. You don't like me. I don't care. Enjoy your little podcast. Enjoy your little comedy sets. It's all a bit. It's all. Co That's what I love about comedians. They'll make fun of you. They'll say something. It's just a bit. It's just a joke, bro. It's just a joke. Get out of here with this nonsense. Fake, phonies, two-faced. That's who you guys are. That's exactly who you guys are. And everyone knows it. You're not doing yourselves any favor. You sit back on your little chair. Let me tell you how it was for Ariel at ESPN. Let me tell you what happened in the bed. You know nothing. You know less than nothing. Stop talking about my career. And if you're going to go to one source who has some distorted beef with me that was a 1,000% wrong, reveal your source, Bubba. Reveal it. Don't start talking about a million people. Nonsense. So again... I've just wasted 20 minutes on this. High Road Helwani would be shattered. He would say, you're wasting time. You're punching down. There is no High Road Helwani anymore. It's the Helwani era. And, uh, and, and, and for everyone who says you wouldn't say this to his face, of course I would. I'm not looking to fight anyone. I'm an actual civilized human being. But ask a couple of my friends in Cleveland who had issues with me over the past year and a half if I went right up to their face. If I walked up to their face when they were trying to look ask them if i'm that kind of guy ask ben Askren. ask donald Cerrone. people in the past who have had issues with me do i go up to your face and try to settle beefs absolutely even when i was being banned and the story that he doubled down on again the whole narrative i don't even think he knows the i don't even think he knows the definition of the word narrative honestly i think he doesn't know the definition of the word narrative it's the whole narrative that the whole community is talking about who are these people one dude you have one source who got it from the one guy who tried to change the story enough the jig is up guys phony fake two-face you could keep doubling down triple down quadruple down i'm not worried about it you're not going to hurt me you, you tried to hurt me going into the Jake Paul fight. It, it's good. I'm here, independent, on a little island, all by myself. I'm Gucci, man. I'm Gucci, as the kids say. I'm good. So you can make up all the stories that you want. But rest assured, we all know, and we all expected this. We know who you are. You're not fooling anyone. Oh, he's the best in the business, but he's damn sensitive. Based on what, Brian? Based on what? Based on what, Brendan? Based on what? Byproduct, I'm not the one who shoots from the hip. Really? I'm not the one? Why don't you shoot from the hip? Who are you so mad at? Who was that drone strike for? Who are you so mad at? If it wasn't about me, why don't you shoot from the hip? Go ahead. We're all waiting. You won't. You won't. So that's that. I mean, one pathetic segment that was sitting back there and listening to that like really this is what we waited a week for you could have sent out a tweet and saved us a hell of a lot of time just do me a favor leave my name out of your mouth leave my family's name out of your mouth don't talk about them don't don't throw your minions under the bus when they talk about them just let's go our separate ways now all right i've never had a negative thing to say about you your show your experiences all that i've never said a thing when everyone piled on about your comedy and all that stuff, never said a thing. And now you want to keep talking about my career. And then when you get called out, say, oh, he was just a byproduct. Get out of here with that nonsense. Stop talking about me. 
Last warning. Done. And I won't go on a media tour to talk about you. I regret it, honestly, going on McAfee's show the next day to talk about you. Because you know what? Like you told me a long time ago, true story. Ask Brendan to come on my show a long time ago. You know what he said? A long, long time ago. I have a podcast. Why should I go on other people's? All right. I was like, all right. Now I know what's up. I don't have that mentality. I like to spread the love, spread the wealth. And so I'm happy to go on Patrick's show. But I'm done with it now. Enough. Go back to your jokes. Go back to your little bits and your 50 podcasts that no one listens.